Marcus Conti reporting some top stories in the Democratic race for the presidency. You heard Elizabeth Warren got a new endorsement. George Soros, the billionaire, the eight, eight billionaire, eight times a billionaire, 86-year-old George Soros, has endorsed Elizabeth Warren. We'll take a look at that. And uh, some of the new polls are out. DNC has upped, their, um, upped the ante on who can get into the November uh, debate and the December debate. So we'll take a look at that as well. And Tulsi Gabbard making news again, will not run for Congress, will not run for re-election to the United States Congress. Why? I don't know. We'll find out. So this is big. Endorsement time. Soros says Elizabeth Warren is, quote, most qualified to be president. Oh, really? All right. So who the hell is George Soros? George Soros, if you haven't heard, is he's the guy who, you know, he's Hillary Clinton, gave more. He was Hillary Clinton's most generous donor. He broke the Bank of England in 1992, sunk the Thai bod, crashed the Malaysian markets. Uh, this is this is a convicted of a of a insider trading in France. Paid a two point three million dollar fine to get out. He's eighty six years old. He's worth eight billion dollars. Does not consider the social ramification of his actions. Wow. So we'll take a little. I got a, a nice video uh, of George Soros saying all those things in his own words. What he actually means. Now, what does that have to do with Elizabeth Warren? Well, Elizabeth Warren. Is she accepting this endorsement? Is she embracing the the magic of George Soros, the terror of George Soros? George Soros is also um, guilty, um, I guess, by association of uh, funding, you know, uh, uh, movements like Antifa. I, I don't know. I don't really follow that. But in the bigger picture, he is a notorious uh, 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 speculator that has crashed economies, Can, does not consider the social ramification of his action, and he's he's endorsing Elizabeth Warren. Why not endorse uh, Trump? Why not endorse, uh, I don't know, Bernie Sanders? Uh, you can't endorse Bernie Sanders, because I've said it a hundred times. Bernie Sanders represents a reversal of crony capitalism, right? But Elizabeth Warren's right in there with him, so... It's a it's a uh, it's a nice pick. So here's the news: George Soros, like Barack Obama, has passed over former Vice President Joe Biden uh, when it comes to the 2020 U.S. election. So so uh, Obama, I didn't hear Obama endorse Joe Biden. That's that's true. In a wide ranging interview with the New York Times, the progressive billionaire predicted that Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts will become the Democratic nominee who faces Trump in 2020. She has emerged as the clear-cut person to beat, she, he said. I don't have a public stance, <laughs> but I do believe that she is the most qualified to be president. I don't have a public stance. You're on the fucking New York Times, giving your opinion, you moron, you fucking scumbag. Soros quickly added that his comments were not an endorsement of Warren. What is it then? saying, I'm not endorsing anybody because I want to work with whoever. Adding, I don't express my views generally because I have to live with whoever the electorate chooses. People follow billionaires' leads. Eh? So he's he's giving his opinion. This is an endorsement. Now, will Elizabeth Warren accept that endorsement? Will she say anything to pass it on, to to pass it up or embrace it? We shall find out. When the Times' Andrew Ross Sorkin pointed out that the ultra-wealthy, including uh, his Wall Street peers, think Warren's taxation of the rich and tight regulation plans for banks would be a giant threat to the, quote, capitalistic system in which he made his riches, Soros said he disagrees, reiterating his support of a wealth tax. Uh, These guys notoriously play against their own judgment, right? They're, They're short sellers. They're, you know, so do you believe them? Or is he hedging his bet saying that we can, well, let's get Elizabeth Warren and none of those things will happen anyway. Uh, You never know. You never know what he's thinking, right? So let's look at, let's jump right into Soros. This is a great clip of Soros in the 90s, 1998, in his own words, telling you that he doesn't care about the social consequence of his actions. In other words, if he sinks the Bank of England and starves, you know, 8 million people or does the same in 
in Thailand or in Malaysia. He doesn't care because why? Because he's a billionaire. He's a, he's a money maker. As long as I make money, there is no, I don't, I have no regard for the social problems that those uh, investments create. This is who Elizabeth Warren is, uh, is endorsing. So let's listen to George Soros in his own words, 1998. Soros makes huge bets on whole countries and economies. Last year, when he saw cracks in the Asia boom, he began selling the currency in Thailand. Traders in Hong Kong followed suit, triggering a financial crisis that plunged much of Asia into a depression. In the last two years, you've been blamed for financial collapse of Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and Russia. All of the, all of the above. That's, all of the above. Yeah, yeah. Are you that powerful? No, I think there's a great misunderstanding. The prime minister of, of Malaysia. Yes. Um, said that the region spent 40 years trying to build up its economy and along comes a moron like Soros right. with a lot of money and it's all over. He called you a criminal. It's easier for him to blame an outside force and then to admit that they were mismanaging uh, their economy and their currency. Uh, they so he blames the Malaysian government for mismanaging their economy and their and their currency. Uh, that's like that's like a rich person saying that uh, a poor person is starving, and uh, we are going to shut down the grocery store because we own it, and we're going to limit the the amount of food, and then turn it around saying that the hungry person is guilty of not being able to manage the amount of food they had on reserve. Uh, it's just a twisted. Psychology, but there's more. The uh, French finance minister uh, talked about uh, hanging uh, speculators from lampposts. Soros says the Asian currencies would have collapsed even if he hadn't been in the market. They were overvalued. He says people tend to follow his lead because he's been so successful. I think that uh, I've been blamed, blamed for everything. I am basically there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences. Of, of what I do. That's the, that's the statement right there. I do not look at the social consequences of what I do. Listen to it again. I tend to follow his lead because he's been so successful. I think that uh, I've been blamed, blamed for everything. I am basically there to, uh, um, to make money. I am there to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. I do not look at this, the social consequences of what I do. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of what I do. So if I sink an economy and because I short their currency, that's okay. That's fair big game because those are the rules that billionaires play by. Right? This, is, this is who Elizabeth Warren is, is, uh, is accepting the endorsement from. Let's listen to a little more. Whatever his motivations, no one can accuse him of greed. He's backed away from the day-to-day -day operation of his businesses and is giving away his billions now with the same determination that he made them in places like Haiti, a country that has less money in the bank than he does. Last month, he brought the First Lady with him for a look at some of the projects his foundation is funding. This is Mr. George Soros, and uh, he's going to be helping the hospital. Whether I or somebody else uh, does whatever is happening in the markets, it really doesn't make any difference to the outcome. I don't feel guilty because I'm engaged in an amoral activity which is not meant to have anything to do with guilt. An amoral activity that has nothing to do with guilt when he's trading and, and crashing markets. It's crazy. Part of the reason he is so rich is that the Soros hedge funds operate offshore in the Netherlands Antilles, to avoid scrutiny by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So even while Soros tells Congress and the Treasury that hedge funds... That's essentially called tax evasion. ...must be regulated to stop the global crisis, he's avoiding the rules. Why is it that, uh, that Americans can't invest in the quantum fund? It's an offshore fund. Why is that? Because the fund is not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, so... so uh, uh, to avoid regulation, they're not registered in. They're not registered in the United States Securities and Exchange Commission to avoid those regulations. That's why they do it. We we are not licensed to do business in the United States. That's right. 
because because we are not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, because we we find it more convenient to operate without it. So, in some ways, it's to escape regulation. Yeah, that's right. He admits it right there to avoid regulation. Listen, watch. But you've been sitting here talking about uh, the need for regulation. Yes, and whatever regulations are imposed, we will obey. We will. We will. So he wants to set the regulations. So that's who George Soros is. All right, that's who George Soros is. That's who Elizabeth Warren just gave a just was endorsed by the the ultimate the ultimate speculator George Soros. So let's switch the page to the NC has raised threshold for December debate and a little bit for November. So there's a little. A little, uh, a little read. The um, the halfway mark of the Democratic debate calendar is coming up, and the sixth debate will likely feature the smallest stage yet. The next one is the fifth debate, by the way. They're talking about the sixth that's out in December. New thresholds announced by the Democratic National Committee for the sixth debate, which will be hosted by Politico, Politico and B- PBC, PBS. <laughs> Uh, on December 19th in, in Los Angeles, represent, uh, uh, represents only a modest step up from the criteria for the next debate in November. But they could still seriously engage to part- endanger the participation of all the five top candidates. All but the five top candidates, excuse me. Uh, so they're, they're narrowing, they're basically dwindling the December debate down to five. Let's look at the criteria. To make the December debate, candidates must hit 4% support in at least four DNC-approved polls. All of this is speculative, right? Because nobody knows the exact rules that the DNC is is working under. Nobody counts the the exact – nobody crunches the numbers except the DNC. Uh, And they notoriously cheat. So we're, uh, we're, we're expected to believe what the DNC is saying about who makes the criteria and who doesn't. Uh, Joe Biden, who can't put 10 people in front of him, somehow breaks, you know, smashes the bar in every one of these polls. Uh, It's just ridiculous, right? Polls are rigged. The DNC rigs the criteria, moves the goalpost. Remember when they said only 10 people on stage, then there was 12? Uh, You know, but it's it's just fun to get out in the open anyway. Uh, Instead, they can qualify by hitting 6% in two approved earlier state polls. So here you go. They need for December they need four percent, or six percent to approved earlier state polls, whatever that means. Candidates must also bring in donations of two hundred thousand unique donors, with a minimum of eight hundred donors in twenty states. Who's fucking counting? Who's keeping track of all this shit? Right? On fake polls anyway. The polls are fake, right? So DNC, nonetheless. Let's just look at the dates. So we've got a uh, a November, sometime in November debate. I don't know what it is. November and December 19, which should be a big one, the halfway point in Los Angeles. Uh, so the DNC has continuously stepped up the requirements to participate in successful debates, successive debates throughout the year. The new thresholds will put pressure on Democratic candidates outside a top five. Biden, Warren, Sanders, Buttigieg, and Harris, who have routinely polled above 4% uh, in, in approved surveys so far. Uh, we'll put pressure on these guys. It's not going to put pressure on them. Those are the, those are the guaranteed shoe wins. Biden, Warren, and Sanders have already qualified for December debates. According to Politico, Buttigieg and Harris need 4% support in one or more polls to make it on the stage. So they'll get that. Uh, of course, the DNC is going to give them that. Right? They're going to try to get you know seven, seven people on stage. Who knows? For, for, December, for November. Only one, one other candidate has hit 4% in any of the other four qualifying polls, and that's the billionaire Tom Steyer, who spent $47 million of his own money in the third quarter. I'm I'm bored of this. This is boring. This is boring. Uh, so December, in November, we should see maybe seven candidates, seven or eight, and December we should knock it down to five. 
right, in the rigged debates, right? Because you need, look, there's no discussion. There's, the, the discussion on these debates suck. It's sound bites. It's like you got 30 seconds to, to, to throw something out there and hope you, hope you grab someone's attention or defeat the guy next to you. It's bullshit. Right? I wish they had an opportunity, but I think generally it has turned out to be a reasonably good system. I disagree. That's uh, some governor from New Mexico. So sorry, I, I dragged that one out. But uh, nonetheless, the, um, the DNC is, uh, is cranking up the requirements, of which they should. I don't think there should be more than five people on stage. So here's some more fake polls as of October 25. That was yesterday, Post and Courier. They still have Biden at 30, Warren at 19, Sanders at uh, 13, Harris 11, uh, Buttigieg 9%, and Gabbard 3. Uh, that's interesting. Right? I, I, again, I disagree with all these polls. It's, it's, they're calling landlines. They're calling old people in nursing homes. They're not calling anybody. They're fudging the numbers in the back rooms. It's all bullshit. Right? Whoever gives them the money. This has so much sway in the media. You think this is up on the up and up? Like they're going to just let fucking Post and Courier and Quinnipiac and CNN and MSNBC and the, and the, and the, and the uh, Economist decide on the election? Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy, man? You tell us what we need to know. Uh, you, we need to know that Biden is winning and that and Elizabeth Warren is a close second because we're going to do the bait and switch. We're going to switch her out with Biden because Biden's a shit sandwich. Elizabeth Warren can get a couple of idiots in front of her. That's the real. That's the real shit. Sanders got to bury. If you don't bury Sanders, you don't. You don't advance. So in these uh, polls, uh, Tulsi Gabbard three percent, two percent, one percent. So Gabbard is still getting crushed. So Tulsi Gabbard is still making news. Tulsi Gabbard has decided to not. Why is she important? Because if she, because she, first of all, she's the only one. She's the only one shaking the tree, rattling, you know, shaking the boat, stirring the pot, Tulsi Gabbard. She's calling the elections rigged. She's challenging the primaries as being too crowded. She's speaking. She's talking. Right? She's calling Hillary Clinton, you know, the rot of the Democratic Party, right? cancer. That's what you got to do. Right? It's a real shit. Right? So that's why she's important. And she could represent a third party run. So let's just listen to Tulsi Gabbard in her own words decline maybe ending her political career or is she maybe ending her political political career by not running for re-election in hawaii let's listen day one to do that job whereas president i will immediately begin to work to end this new cold war and nuclear arms race end our interventionist foreign policy of carrying out wasteful regime change wars, and instead redirect our precious resources towards serving the needs of the people right here at home. As such, I will not be seeking re-election to Congress in 2020, and I humbly ask you for your support for my candidacy for President of the United States. Wow, what a comment. Wow, did we hear that right? I will not be receiving- War and nuclear arms race. And redirect our precious home. As such, I will not be seeking re-election to Congress in 2020, and I humbly ask you for your support for my candidacy for President of the United States. Wow, she's selling her, she's selling her, her Toyota. She's quitting her job and trying to fly her, her Toyota Corolla to Mars. Oh man, I don't know, man. Do you quit your day job? This shit is crazy. It seems it seems it seems odd. What's going on with Tulsi Gabbard? So it seems oh look, Hawaii Congresswoman faces the tough primary challenge uh back home as she pursues the Democratic presidential nominate nomination. Hawaii state senator Kai Kahala has so far raised more than three hundred and forty five thousand dollars in his attempt to unseat Gabbard according to the Center for Responsive Politics. More than 221000 Gabbard has raised for her presidential campaign for Hawaii, from Hawaii residents. So, it's, it's, um, so she's getting challenged, right? That's what the Democrats do. Oh, yeah? You're calling our elections rigged? Now we'll get, we'll get somebody, we'll get some Hawaiian guy to challenge you in Hawaii and knock you out the box. Uh, that's what they're doing. Right? That's what they're going to do. Gabbard, um, Gabbard's 
House re-election campaign stalled, raising negative $20 in the second quarter. <laughs> negative $20 for Senate run. Uh, and a recent Hawaiian poll, Hawaii poll found that half of her constituents preferred someone else to fill her seat. I don't know if I believe the polls, but it is interesting that Tulsi Gabbard is not running for re-election. She's announced it after Hillary Clinton called her a favorite of the Russians. She's a third-party spoiler. Is Tulsi Gabbard going to run as a third party? Well, let's listen to what she said on CNN about that very issue. Exactly. You, may, you, you didn't make this debate. You may make the next one. You're sticking in the race. But fact is, you're well behind what is a pretty established group uh, of front runners in this race, including the former Vice President Joe Biden. If you don't win the Democratic nomination, will you run as an independent? I will not. No, I've ruled that out. I'm going to continue to focus on moving our campaign forward, continuing this grassroots campaign, continue to deliver our message to the American people and ask for their support. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank this you. So that was before that was before Tulsi Gabbard, that was before Hillary Clinton called her a Russian a Russian asset, and that the Dem- Democratic Party, uh, before the Democratic Party, started to support a primary challenger in her district. So is Tulsi Gabbard obliged, obligated, required to follow what she just said? I will not run for independent. I will real not run independent. <laughs> Fuck no, she can do that, and she should. I, I think she certainly should. Um, if if uh, you know again, if if it's anybody but Sanders, right? So, so Mark Conte reporting. We got some uh, you know some some interesting stuff for for Elizabeth Warren to digest. Is she going to come out and say I don't want George Soros's uh, accommodation? I don't want his endorsement. I, she, he didn't endorse Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders would come out and say, "Yeah, whatever. I don't want your endorsement, right? I I want to I want to sink you and your friends." So that, that was pretty interesting, pretty tight, and um, you know, fake polls. DNC is uh, upping the requirements for their debate, which they should. It's, come on, who wants to look at twelve people on stage? Knock it down to five, four, three, five, five. Remember, come on, 12, 12, do it five and have to have five people, three hours, Ooh, five people, three hours, no time constraints, no time constraints. Let them cut each other off, right? Do it like crosstalk. I right? just c- cut each other off and, and let it be a free debate, right? Every, ch- chirp in every five or 10 minutes with a new question. I right? let it go free fall, free fall, free, f- fucking free fall, free fly, free, free <laughs> Free, f- freestyle. I do freestyle. Man. Fucking, so, Marcus Conte reporting. 